All right. Thanks everyone for jumping in on the call today. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to unpack. Mostly a lot of organizational challenges that we're facing are finally getting resolved and hopefully that will propagate to even more efficiency. So I'll, I'll let Daniel start from the uh, introduction to the new Trello board structure that caused some confusion <laughs> yesterday, but we are definitely seeing a lot of, uh, you know, benefits coming out of that. So the new Trello board structure, and I think it would be great to mention the Slack user groups too uh, in this explanation. That sounds good. So um, I'm just going to quickly screen share. Okay, are you all seeing that okay? Not yet. Okay, now no, we can see. Perfect. Okay, so the basic changes, and there will probably be some little tweaks coming up to Trello, but none that are going to cause the kind of disruption that yesterday's caused. Um, the second column, you know, each, each board will have its own resources column there in the beginning still. In the second column, we now have the basic team boards. And what this is going to give is um, any sub teams to your team are going to be listed there and any parent teams. So right now we're in the main board, uh, which is here, and then each of the sub teams is there. So I can click into task team, and that's now gonna give me the overall task team set. So things that are tasks that involve all four tasks are appearing here. Then we're gonna have, you know, I can then drill down into task geo, say. Now I'm on the geo board, and now I can go back up there to the task team circle. One other change that's important, actually first I'll mention one, one other piece that relates to that. I'm gonna hop back out to the main and then head over to communications. We're gonna start trying, and again, teams don't worry about it yet, but this is, this is a vision for later. Um, you can instantly just click through on these to the team you're looking for, but we're also trying to have it so that each will have, you know, it's, it's your mission, this is, this is just the stuff that is your team's responsibility. If it's, if it's not in this mission, then it, it involves more than just your team. Um, and outputs. This is, makes it really clear for people to know, here's what your team's responsible for. If I'm looking for something that's one of those kind of things, I probably should be talking to someone in your team. The changes that we're making are over here. You'll notice that uh, between, on, between doing and done, some teams have an ongoing as well. There's a blocked column. If your team is blocked on getting something or other done and you need something from, from someone who isn't already on your team, this is a great place to put that, or maybe it is even someone on your team. And that lets us know if there's extra, especially your program managers lets them know uh, if, there's, if there's extra work that needs to be done to get that unblocked so your team can move ahead with what The final piece there is done daily. We're gonna start working in communications at putting together just a quick report. We'll kind of check in with you if there's things we're confused about, but we'll simply put out a report for each team that is showing, you know, here's where the blockers are, here's the stuff that's gotten accomplished today um, that's kind of moved out to done, um, and, and any of the stuff that is, is sort of the top priority stuff in your doing list. So that'll help all of us get a bit more of a bird's eye view of what's going on uh, throughout the organization. As far as uh, user groups go, uh, I'm just gonna, change my share here quickly and just quick note uh i think the biggest learning from this is just the this quick way to navigate from parent to uh, child boards which is going to be an extreme game changer here uh, i think the the list names and just the process for those is still work in progress primarily because we we have to figure out a way to communicate those so we'll see some progress on that too so this is just sort of a first step at trying to get our um, user groups working. So under, for people who have this sort of an interface to Slack, up at the top there, you'll see people is listed. There's all the members. I can now click to user groups. And we have one for each of the main teams. If you have a team that needs its own group, then add one there. The goal with this is that people join the team that is there, where they're putting most of their effort and most of their focus. That makes it much easier for any of us. You know, right now, if I need somebody to say, help take minutes, um, I can go to the comms channel and blast that channel, but there's, there's maybe 30 people who are in there who aren't on comms, but they need to know what's going on in comms. This lets us have a more focused way of talking to a given team. Uh, and an easy way to use that is I can then go into, say, general and write communications. Oh, wow. I need minutes. That message is now going to go to everyone on the communications team. Um, so cool. find the team that you're a part of. Uh, join up. 
We'll figure out the names and the usage uh, as we go, but this is the first step and we'll, we'll iterate as we figure out what makes it most useful. That's amazing. Thank you so much, so much for putting that together. Uh, I don't even know that that thing exists. So that's good. That, that, to do those Arthur. Yeah, anyway, Daniel looks amazing in Trello, right? Like this, very useful, thanks. If there was a question, I, I had lag there. Hear me? Okay, cool. So uh, the other uh, thing on the agenda that I put together is a potential for a non-Kaggle task that can be added to task vaccine scope of work uh, via independent team. Uh, I basically had two interesting calls about it yesterday and was trying to integrate some uh, people with biology and medical background into it. And to give you just a quick uh, picture of the purpose of the task, um, there is a general concern with the drugs that are being applied right now for the treatments, uh, the ones that are not FDA approved and have uh, no clear um, indication of any side effects or abnormal side effects. And we thought that it would be a good idea to see if we can help with that through the current Core 19 data set. And I basically structured a task that outlines the goals, the purposes, the audience for it. And I had two calls with Jeremy and Hillary, which are beneficial to understanding the scope of work. It's kind of the off topic task, but if there is anyone that feels they could uh, benefit this task, feel free to join the discussion uh, either in, in Slack or on Trello card, and maybe we'll, we'll create the small team. I cannot lead that team, but I'm more than uh, willing to, to help structure that team. Just to, if it's all right, a quick note on that also is that we're starting to look at how we can uh, help coordinate. We're starting a skunk, uh, basically a skunk works board today. So anybody who has an idea of like, here's a, here's a cool thing that a team like this could be doing that relates to, to, to COVID-19, uh, you can just put your idea up on there. And you know, right now we're keeping our focus, laser focus on those, those big four tasks. Um, but this is a place where we can organize those other pieces, see where there's agreement and energy and where a team might be able to form, uh, and we can, we can work on doing that. We're also going to look at, at bringing in uh, something called open space technology that makes it really easy for teams to aggregate organically, and people can focus around some of the areas where they're interested. Sounds great. Yeah, it's all about kind of expanding the, the abilities of us applying our immense resource, because we have so many people and not everyone is already engaged. So just making sure we can uh, properly utilize everyone's willingness to help. So the next piece is uh, discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. Um, I'll take a second and mention what I've been exploring uh, across different... Uh... Um, so you get mute. Yep. Sorry, I think my microphone keeps disappearing. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, so I've been exploring these challenges across different teams. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to dive deep into all four tasks, but I've been following the risk factors task and working with Maya primarily on understanding what are the organizational challenges in terms of helping people that can deliver specific NLP tasks and execute on very specific machine learning uh, or uh, engineering problems. And there are a couple of challenges there uh, that relate to, first of all, like structuring in inputs and outputs and defining the problems. I've had a very productive call today with Mark that is helping me and Maya put together a process for formulating the right keywords in terms of inputs for filtering relevant papers. I think that's a good way to structure it. And I've seen all the teams kind of struggling with it. So hopefully that uh, brings in some uh, common uh, code or framework process to properly um, approach these problems. Can I, uh, can I name a really dumb blocker? So I've never used CoLab uh, and I'm spending like 30 minutes right now trying to figure out how to freaking get a data frame and you know, to link it so that what I can do offline uh, can can be shared with everybody. So if anybody could just like kind of like yank me through that so that it's not holding up me sharing a, a vital step in quality controlling, that'd be great, thanks. Hey Mark, maybe you and I can take this up uh, afterwards because I've done a little work on uh, the topic of capturing that subject matter expert, uh, those keywords, so, uh, and played around with it in CoLab. So 
uh, maybe we can just touch base after this meeting and start there. Sure, that that sounds good. But this is a question about um, specifically with, with R. So I'm using R code, and the question is, how do I get this? How do I convert what I've written in R over to CoLab? Yeah, I think it will be still beneficial for Steve to take a look at that uh, thing that you create, but after you create it. Yeah, I agree. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Um, any other blockers on the admin team that you're aware of, Daniel? Uh, no, there's nothing else that, that sort of is, is coming, coming right to mind as far as blockers go. But as we start moving stuff into those blocked categories, then we'll start to have a better sense of that. So tomorrow's report on that will be much more concise and clear. All right, sounds good. So let's switch to team reporting. So I'll, I'll quickly remind, and I've a little bit extended the structure for team reporting. So high level progress, uh, quick summary on top three tasks that are being worked on. Uh oh, you're on mute again. There you go. Top three tasks for us uh, to understand what exactly is your team working on and doesn't have to be super detailed, but just high level uh, progress in those. Time to results. What are results and how soon can you show existing progress externally? And the blockers, what do you need help with? So we'll start with Maya, uh, risk factors team. Well, uh, <clears throat> uh, today I've got uh, uh, exactly, exactly an opposite of progress uh, because I've uh, manually assessed all, all the results uh, we've uh, got so far. And I uh, went through everything manually and I realized how far it is from uh, what we meant to find. Uh, which puts me back um, into the uh, necessity uh, to actually find the keywords uh, that, that would work uh, in order to extract relevant papers and relevant uh, sentences. Um, it seems like uh, this uh, thresher uh, might help on that. The downside is that uh, downloading data set uh, from it gets uh, about two hours. So I believe my primary uh, concern at the moment that I have to solve as soon as possible, it is uh, to find on uh, how do we use keywords and big grams and how do we get uh, high quality results? Uh, beside that, I realized that the, uh, basically the flow uh, that we use is not an optimal one. And uh, guys who produce results, they do not really check what they produced. Uh, so uh, I probably have to help uh, my team uh, to do it fast and efficient. Uh, so I'm resolving these two and uh, working on creating an efficient uh, workflow for everybody. Sounds great. Can I jump in? Go or ahead. is now not the right time, Arthur? Go ahead. Uh, so I, Arthur and I talked about this um, specifically, and that's what my effort is starting up. And I want to um, just insert what I think is a vital component of our workflow that you're kind of alluding to, Maya. The question I, I firmly believe is not about external um, experts, but quality control at an engineering level of what assumptions we are making about the words when we use them and search for them. Specifically, what we need are more people that are statistically oriented and linguists or psycholinguists that are thinking carefully about how the words are being aggregated and where we're going to find the right words. Um, of course, we, we have the right idea in mind when we think pollution, but um, when people put the word on paper pollution, they might be using it in different senses that, as you've noticed, um, shit in and shit out. Um, so I'm working specifically to try to fix that problem. And hopefully we don't have to undo a lot of the hard work that's already been happening. It's just a matter of implementing a quality control at the input, uh, and then maybe also at the output. Uh, if you can talk to me individually today, if you can find a dime, I'll, I'll really appreciate that. For sure. I actually agree with Mark.
Yes, thanks, Arthur. Um, so I would say we are progressing quite well with extracting data from various sources. Uh, then a current topic of discussion is uh, formalizing, for example, names of columns, formats of various types of data, because we want to have something consistent that is easy to use for the other teams. And um, yes, I would say those are the main points. Otherwise, not uh, um, no extreme um, developments from uh, yesterday. I would say for now we're fine. Hi. Um, yeah, we're also just, you know, like yesterday, uh, but we have uh, identified a few tasks that we're working on right now. The first one is um, just to refine our search engine. So there are a few directions that we're looking into. One is semantic topic modeling or semantic search engine. And that would, you know, kind of probably solve the issue of the keywords to kind of uh, in integrate the context of the words into the search, so to speak. And um, the second area we're working on is to, uh, we reached out to Brandon to get like uh, the new data set with section information and to see if we can uh, get some information from the different sections. And the third one, we also, uh, collaborating with uh, Dan from the tax vaccine and cerebric team, um, and also Iman to uh, look into data annotation and classification for some other information, like for example, the study design uh, extraction. So, um, not at the moment, yeah. everybody. Uh, so yesterday was that AI and COVID conference at Stanford yesterday. That was awesome. And I think a few of us were listening in. It was both inspiring and I think helpful in contextualizing some of the problems that we're thinking about. For the team specifically, um, we've made some progress on thinking about negation detection. So trying to weed out false positives for like drugs being considered for COVID treatment. Um, so we're still working on that. Uh, as Christine said, we're working on trying to classify the evidence types in different papers. So is it a computational, experimental, clinical type of study? Um, and then Iman's team is going to help us with that uh, soon enough, which those annotations are going to be useful for like a machine learning classifier to automatically annotate papers. Um, we're also starting to think about relation extraction of protein-protein interactions. Um, and that'll help us build up a knowledge graph of like the mechanism of COVID and drug action, et cetera. So Fatma on our team is starting to research that and get involved in that task. And that's it for us. No blockers right now. The, uh, I, I don't know that there's uh, much updates that um, I'm aware of, but I think we're still trying to uh, put some structure around getting those keywords. And I think you said you, you were having some conversations on that. So I think we wanna sync up all those conversations, including Mark, what you were talking about in terms of uh, <clears throat> the, the use of the keywords, um, the, uh, and then and any sub questions. And so that's the task definition request for subject matter expertise. And then the, the evaluation, I don't know that we've uh, formalized that. So I think um, if Maya or Christine or others, you, you started to look at results and now you've got some feedback that uh, either from you or from others that say, hey, these are the wrong articles or we need to exclude this other stuff. I think we wanna try and uh, adopt some best practices across the tasks on how to get that feedback in a, in a quantitative structured way so we can feed it, we can use it uh, in the modeling. It's not just anecdotal, it's not just 
uh, qualitative, it's, uh, it's somehow quantitative, uh, quantitative um, and quantified so that we can, we can use it. So uh, I think it's good to get that feedback, but I think people also need to be taking a step back as they get it to think, okay, how, how can we uh, really put some structure around receiving that feedback in a way that can be used to inform the modeling that is producing the relevant documents. Um, the a quick update, if you don't mind. Uh, Shannon from, uh, uh, from this uh, tool connected me and she told that she, she will help us uh, with breaking uh, the documents into smaller chunks so that we can download keywords and exclusion words much faster, which is amazing. And, uh, and Steve, I've, I've started to work uh, today, I've started to working on uh, what, uh, quantitative, uh, what quantitative parameters should we uh, include such as number of citations of the paper, uh, the density of keywords and frequencies and things like that. So if you work on that and can update me, that would be lovely. Well, and these, these are a couple of things that are less on the organizational challenge side necessarily, but just a couple of key points. So we have a call that's going to be coming up with a sort of a, a world famous guy who's working with smart cities, Agnes Seib. Um, he's willing to talk with us a little bit. Um, and so uh, Daniel from Tastio and I are getting together um, to, to have a Zoom conference with him that other people are welcome to join in on. We'd love some help prepping it as well. He's willing to help us tap in to some municipalities that are doing a lot of enriched data with their populations um, and to, to sort of help bridge from them to us so that we might be able to get some of that data that would be useful for us. So if that's of interest to anyone finding out more about that, get in touch with me. We'll get you onto the call with Daniel and I trying to figure out what that's going to look like and we can, we can talk about what we can benefit from. The, uh, the, the other main piece that I was just going to say is you know, we, we were uh, talking on a call earlier today, and it's, it's, as of today, it's two weeks to go in terms of what we're doing. What we've accomplished so far is absolutely incredible. It's amazing seeing, I mean, just organizationally and in terms of actual products that you guys are coming up with, it's amazing. Um, there was a conversation of, you know, thinking about what we're making from that product's point of view and just remembering what that product is. In this stage of what we're doing, that product is a submission into Kaggle that is going to be something that is going to blow them away. And so it's good for each team to just review what are the criteria that we're using, that they're using to evaluate what we're giving them, because we want them to be able to realize what a powerhouse we've made and help aim that towards the maximum impacts on COVID-19 that we can have. So look over those things. Each of your teams I know has a program manager now. That, that is your team's best friend. That's the person who is going to try to help get all of the fiddly bits off of your plate that are logistical and um, and inter-team so that you can focus in on the work that you're doing. So talk with them, make sure that they know what you need and that'll help us all get you what it is. Can I plug in two things? One, don't forget about DataViz, which is there to help you um, make those visuals. Uh, and then also that, you know, that for those listening in on the conversation with Maya and Artur about this, these assumptions with keywords, 
definitely plug in to me if you um, want to have the same discussion. I'm going to be reaching out because I think it's a general concern, but um, uh, it'd be much easier if you come to me with um, the inputs and output assumptions that you're making right now. Thanks. Thank you, Arthur. Yeah, thank you for organizing this. This is great, Arthur. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks.